Okay, so hello, ladies and gentlemen. Um, welcome to Nikkei's session. I'm Malko Kotani. Um, I'm an anchor of Nikkei Plus 10, which is a nightly business news in Japan, and I will be moderating today. Uh, today's topic is virtues and vices of a digitally connected society. Uh, young people spend at average of nine hours a day consuming media, fueling unprecedented growth for information and gaming platforms. Uh, let me give you an example. I have a friend. She has a son that goes to junior high school. He started off playing games, online gaming, and then as days goes by, he started to be addicted to it. He would play the game 24-7, and eventually he would not go to school. He would not eat. He would not bathe. So finally, he had to drop out of school, and he was transferred to another school. So I would say that would be one of the vices and plus that kind of situation, that kind of uh, happens uh, all the time everywhere around the world now, that you can say maybe it's a social phenomenon. And online gaming is now classified as a mental health disorder by WHO. So those are the vices. Now, on the other hand, virtue. One of the virtue is that online gaming uh, could have the potential of becoming one of the Olympic Games that is upcoming in 2024, which sounds very exciting. So today, we would like to see the both sides, virtues and vices of the digitally connected society. Before we go on, I would like to introduce my distingu distinguished panel. I would like to start with you from my right. Uh, he is Mr. Uh, Junhee Liu. I will call him Junhee. Good work. <laughs> yes. He's a partner and CEO of Future Play uh, in the Republic of Korea. He is South Korean leading mobile gaming accelerator. He started off as an inventor, then went on, went on to entrepreneur, and then now he's mostly mainly an uh, investor. Go on to his right. I would like to introduce Mr. In Shulin. Now, from now on, I'll call you Shulin. Uh, he's the CEO of Hero Entertainment, People's Republic of China. His company organized the largest esports tournament in China. He was originally a gamer, a grand champion of China Cup International Regatta three years in a row starting from 2014 through 2016. So uh, he's now a CEO, but he used to be a gamer, expert. <laughs> and so these two are actually the supply side of the gaming, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm not under gaming the accelerator. We no are, longer. Uh, yeah. <laughs> actually, we are not the investing in the gaming industries, but yeah. we are investing to a lot of media industries too. Uh -huh. So maybe. Yes. I'm the big supplier of okay, that. Okay, we'll, we'll come back to that later, okay? And let me introduce uh, this uh, panel uh, on to my left. Uh, he is Mr. Lee Shaodon, and I would like to call you from, uh, call Shaodon from yes. now on. And he is a director and professor of Tsinghua University for Internet Governance. Um, he has contributed many critical construction projects were implemented, uh, such as Global Service Platform for National Domain Name System, Data Backup Centers, Analysis Platform, and so on. So you know the policies of... No, later. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll talk about it. And then last but not least, Miss Amy Organ, and she is Assistant Professor of Human-Computer Interaction uh, from Carnegie Mellon University in the United States of America. She is young scientist specialist and has a very unique way of an analyzing children's 
facial expression by deploying AI sensors in each classroom. <laughs> we'll explain that, right, later. <laughs> sure. <laughs> yeah, but which is very exciting. So you can see whether the children is happy with a with a AI or not, or these kind of things. So she's very professional in that field. So uh, to start off, I would like to go from you, uh, Junhee. Um, I've, uh, as I've, I've explained about the virtues and vices of the digitally connected society, from your point of view, what is the virtue, what is the vice? So I think that it's really hard to define the vice and but vice and virtue mm -hmm. of the, the digital media. So every ecosystem, they have vice and virtue. Mm -hmm. So we should define what is virtue and what is vice. Sometimes mm -hmm. it's virtue for some guys, but it is vice for the other guys. Mm -hmm. So I think that, the, 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 for example, you just said that the one guy, they're addicted to the gaming mm -hmm. and they lost their, their life in the real world. It's a very bad thing. I think that we have a much more the bad things in the real world too. Right. So I think that, they're, they're, for example, internet or the media is kind of ecosystem. So every ecosystem, I believe that, every ecosystem has their own the therapy healing function. Mm -hmm. So sometimes we just see the internet or media as in the, the other the platform, so we can control that. But I think that we cannot control that media or the internet. Can you give me an example? For example, so, uh, for example, though we want to eliminate every porn in the internet, but it is impossible because they always invent some new technologies to how to spread the porn mm -hmm. among the audience. So the, the easiest way is not just making new technologies to prohibit that, but just under the giving them a chance to have a self-healing function inside of the internet. So what I believe is that we cannot de define the bias and the virtue of the, the media, mm -hmm. but we just, what can we do is just under helping their self-healing function inside of the media, inside of the internet. So um, addiction is something that can be solved anyway. So for example, the cigarette. So we, are the, we hate the, the, the addiction, the cigarette addictions, but the, if the guys, they are taking a cigarette and they, are, they can feel the real happiness, so we cannot prohibit it. Mm -hmm. It's the his choice. So, but the, after we spreading the ideas that hey, the biolog biologically, cigarette is so bad for your body, then the, 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 the smoking ratio is <coughs> dramatically decreased mm -hmm. in the, every OECD country. So I, I think that it's very nice uh, example. So we, we cannot make some regulation, mm. but we can help ourselves to make on our self healing function inside of the ecosystem. Okay, we'll talk about that ecosystem later on. And what about you, uh, Shulin? Uh, what is the virtue and, verse, uh, virtue and vice of a digitally uh, connected world? So, uh, just now, uh, I think uh, uh, we heard uh, some uh, we heard some uh, uh, negative uh, aspects. Uh, Jung Hee uh, linked uh, the uh, gaming to cigarette. I don't think it's a very appropriate uh, analogy. Uh, Twenty years ago, uh, it was not a game. It was a reading. It could be music. It could be sport, sports, uh, a athletic uh, item. Uh, 20 years ago, all the uh, excellent uh, commercial product, uh, the core objective uh, is uh, to set up uh, stickiness with the consumers. Uh, that's a property of uh, uh, the commercial world, from a Coke to LV handbag to smartphone, Apple smartphone, and their main objective is to set up a stickiness with the consumers. So actually, commerce in nature is uh, for users uh, to come back repeatedly to buy. So we talk about uh, 10 years ago, we got to see young people due to uh, basketball, they may drop out of school. 20 years ago, there could be young kids could due to plays uh, or reading novels. Uh, 24 by 7, they may, they may stay at home uh, refusing to go to school. 
And in human history,、uh, these kind of things are happening always. So gaming in this、uh, era uh, posed uh, challenges to many people. People say that they are addicting、uh, to young people. Don't forget,、uh, gaming is、uh, also addicting to, for adults. And、uh, to look more deeply. Uh, for young kids or for adults,、uh, they bring happiness, joy as well. After all, we have、uh, such a large market.、Uh, the peers are main, mainly adults. The, this is a high premium、uh, industry.、Uh, youngsters they cannot pay their premium for gaming many times. Therefore, I think.、Uh, In、uh, regarding gaming, it、uh, in today's era it's、uh, something new, and、uh, that fails to get the acceptance of many people. That's it. How? Okay, I would like、uh, I would like to go back to your school days. Okay. <laughs>、uh, you majored in、uh, what was it?、Uh, you majored in、uh, something geographic. Geography faculty back in university. You, I wouldn't like to use the word drop out. That's what I told you. But I drop it out. I drop it out. I would say、uh, most of the genius people in、uh, IT world they do withdraw from their universities. But then from then on, you've、mm. launched your own company. You're so successful in it. Now, but before that, you were gamer. How did you? Were you addicted? And what, did, did you get? How did you get out of the addiction? If you were, firstly, I really got addicted uh, indeed uh, in gaming. At least I know what I want. I don't think there is such a process. I still play games. I enjoy playing games. This is a hobby, and it's still in my heart. If addiction is 100, I think it's been at 50 in my heart. I love playing games. So I think this is true for most of the users. You may like a thing, but. If you, but would you give up your other things for the sake of playing games or for the for the sake of your hobby? I don't think so. Some people prefer fishing, but he may also spend time to accompany their family at weekends. This is not in conflict. I think playing games is simply a hobby. There might be bad parents. They may, you know, they may fish all day, and they want to accompany their kids. This is called addiction. But if it's simply a hobby, it's not something to be worried. They may only spend two hours fishing at weekends. Different persons may have their own way of doing things. And、uh, but for online games, sometimes we only look at the extreme cases. But these extreme cases should not be viewed as a general situation. It's just like in the United States, you know, like mar marijuana is illegal in many、uh, states of United States because the government believes that people can regulate themselves. But in other countries, marijuana is illegal because the government is afraid that it may affect people's health. So,、uh, Amy, I would like to go back to you.、Um, I would like you to just address your versions and vice of、um, digital so、uh, connected society. But have you gotten some ideas from these two gentlemen here? <laughs> yes, absolutely.、Um, and、uh, speaking as one of the young scientists, I, I would love to bring some of the research into、uh, the conversation as well. Yes.、Um, and so,、um, from from the work that we know about today,、um, there are many virtues of. Being connected, of playing games, of engaging in the types of media that children are, are 
exposed to could today. You, could you explain a little about, about how you deploy the sensors in the classroom and what you actually earn from that? Yes, certainly. So in, in one of my projects uh, in my lab at, at Carnegie Mellon, uh, what we're doing is actually working to get people off of screens. So one of the reasons that uh, in educational technology we often like to have people on screens is because we can collect a lot of data about what they're doing and uh, that, in that way provide them with adaptive learning opportunities. Uh, and traditionally, we've only been able to do this if children are sitting with a device, a computer, a, a mobile phone, what have you, and then uh, we can process all of that data and use it to drive the learning experience. Mm -hmm. Uh, one of my projects is working on moving children off of screens and instead putting sensors in the environment so that we can collect a lot of information about what's happening during the learning experience and then provide it back to the instructor in order to help them change their practice, improve things for children, um, engage them in new learning opportunities in, in the um, in the physical world. And how, how do you deploy the sensors? So uh, what we do is, uh, is sort of integrate them into the fabric of the classroom. We put uh, cameras and microphones uh, on the walls, uh -huh. and we use artificial intelligence to process all sorts of things about the classroom scene. So body positions, who's standing, who's sitting, whether the teacher is looking at the board and ignoring the children <laughs> or actually engaging uh, and being warm and building relationships. Uh, where the teacher is walking throughout the class. And we can also look and see whether children are engaged, bored, frustrated, confused, and at what points in time. Mm -hmm. And in that way, we're actually able to um, help the students, but also the teacher guide the experiences that they have. Mm -hmm. And so this is something that can be done in a classroom in, uh, by physically instrumenting the space. But of course, we can also do it with devices as well. So um, in front of a laptop, a TV, a, a mobile phone, you can use the same sensors, do the same processing, and now uh, enable us to tell um, is the, the child sitting there and, and fully focused on what's happening on the screen? Are they confused and they might need some mm -hmm. support? Um, are they getting frustrated and angry with the experience? And so one of the things that we know is that detecting these emotional states is really critical to be able to provide the best opportunities and learning experiences for children, but also could be used to detect things uh, like where, um, where hobbies might turn to addiction, mm -hmm. uh, to understand right. whether children are getting too engaged and involved and overwhelmed, blocking out the rest of their surroundings and <coughs> only focusing on the media. So I guess with a school, inner school, you can actually uh, earn big data Yes. Of those children that may turn out to be addicted to some certain, I don't know, whatever that pops up uh, uh, in a, on the screen. Yes, it's, so this is not a, 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 something we have applied our technology to yet, but absolutely that, that's one of the potentials for mm -hmm. this type of experience right. that you might have is sort of a, a detection or, or warning system. Right. And so we really take care I think was already mentioned to make sure that there's a whole ecosystem mm -hmm. around children involving their parents, their uh, teachers, and others who can support them in, in making good decisions around media use. Well, obviously, teachers are going to have a hard time, you know, because their behaviors are watched as well, not only the yes. children, right? <laughs> <laughs> yes, they are as well. And, and, uh, and in fact, that's one of our goals is to make... Um, professional development for teachers and mm -hmm. ongoing regular practice so that they also mm -hmm. uh, can utilize this data and make sure that um, they're striving constantly to improve the experience for our children. I see. Okay, uh, on to you, Xiaodan. Um, you've listened to the people from there in, in, in the digital industry as well mm -hmm. as he was a gamer, so he, know, he, he knows <laughs> both sides of addiction as a gamer and supply side. And she... That is why he's very successful. 
<laughs> yeah, 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 really. And well, so is uh, Jun Hee. I mean, he is, uh, he's uh, amazing. Um, you, you were a gamer too before no. you invented? Uh, I'm just an inventor. You're just <laughs> an inventor. <laughs> You know, in the market. Yeah, because yeah, yeah. uh, he's really impressive because he uh, invented... Try to make sure you're not the addiction. <laughs> ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, he's the beautiful Maybe. daughter, <laughs> yeah, yeah. right? Uh, anyway, so, um, yeah, he was an inventor. And uh, uh, what, what is so amazing is that uh, he invented and he launched his company, so he was an entrepreneur. But then after six years, Intel acquired his company. And... Ever since, uh, for a while, it was only for like two years, but um, he was with Intel and uh, he was taking the lead of where to invest, uh, which startups to invest. So now he's, he's on his own, and which is exciting. I, I'm, I'm gonna come back to you later, yeah. okay? So anyway, these amazing people uh, that is actually does, doing analyze, providing, um, used to play games, now, uh, from your perspective, you're the, you know very much of a policy on those sides. And uh, what are the virtues and vices that you can think of from your perspective? Uh, I think it's, I, I, I don't know more about policy, but I do policy research. Yeah, because you know, also my phone background is computer science. It's a um, technical guy. Mm -hmm. so, so, but now I get involved with so many policy research matters because I think we need that. Yeah. Just as you mentioned that uh, Jun He is very successful to help others to be more successful, right? No. And, and I think shooting is, uh, is very successful to be a gamer, but now I, I, I hope that this, this year your company can be public. Yeah, so it'll be very successful. And I mean, he's a professor to do a lot of research. Mm -hmm. right? I think it's, it's very good. Mm -hmm. But how to make sure everybody can work together, right? So what kind of model we need to use to improve the state of the digital world mm -hmm. and to how to make sure that the digital world can give benefit for the human being. Yeah, I think so that we have a lot of discussion about the hobby or addiction. I, I think, you know, the, the, the internet uh, is only uh, birth in the uh, 1970s and be popular in, uh, in something to be major in 1980s and 90s, to be popular in the 21st century. Mm -hmm. I think everybody here, including the kid and the adult and the elder person, all of the per per person are kid if, if we face the digital world. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because the internet is new, new things. I think the game is based on the internet. So, so that means everybody needs to learn how to face the new things, how to attract the different kind of information, even for the gaming information, mm -hmm. how to, to make sure you can self-control. Is it like a digital divide sort of thing? It's that not a digital divide. Mm -hmm. I think it's because we cannot ignore the world to be changing to be the uh, digital world. It's a new era. Mm -hmm. So that means if you cannot change that, just adopt that. Right. If you want to adopt a digital world, that means everybody needs to learn right. how to face mm -hmm. that. I think it's a, just I mentioned, even basketball, you can be, it's a hobby or maybe it's addiction, addiction, right? So not only for, for game, even because game is a fresh new thing, there are so many people don't know how to face that. If you adopt that, but make it to be a hobby. Mm -hmm. But so many people will, you know, you know just the full, Fall in love with that, right? <laughs> so, so they cannot ignore that. But we need to educate the people, mm -hmm. just like that we educate our kids, right? Educate don't know how to eat, how to play, how to learn. You need to educate them how to get more food, how to get, get more, you know, just like the, 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 the books, yeah, the knowledge. So they need more educate. So are you saying the vices are that you have to lead more of the people come into this digital society yes. and, uh, and have but them lack of the knowledge. share all of those. Yeah, I mean, I mean, we lack of the knowledge how to help the people mm -hmm. to adopt the new world. New world. I think Junhee has an idea. Uh, <laughs> right? Yeah, so maybe. So I think that, that, that education can be made inside of the internet. 
So it's a very weird idea, but uh, I, I just said that uh, self-healing. What self-healing means is uh, if we found some problems inside of one ecosystem, inside of that ecosystem, we can find the, the, the solutions too. Mm -hmm. So for example, the YouTube. So I have a the, the six-year daughter. She always is digging to the, the YouTube to find very the nice videos there mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. using the, her iPad. Uh, sometimes he, she stopped uh, using the YouTube application because why the, the, she found some videos related to the, the YouTube looking education. Mm -hmm. So it's better to just send the, the looking the YouTube so the, within the, the 15 minutes the, the, the video taught mm -hmm. to her. So I think that so our way to go to the future is uh, uh, just providing that type of their, their intrinsic the education system, the inside of the, the media, inside of their internet. So I think that in the near future, it's very hard to differentiate the, the real world to the virtual world. For example, AR, the augmented reality, is a technology coming up. So now there, the, we think that the gaming, as in the, just in the objective things, that the gaming is the one ingredient, one component of the real world. Mm -hmm. But the, in the near future, they're using the augmented reality for example, gaming mm -hmm. or the, the seeing email or seeing the YouTube video is combined to your real world behaviors. So don't you try to take the iPad away from your daughter? So you mean? In case that she might turn out to be addicted <laughs> to it. Not necessarily. So I, I think that it, it's really hard to define the addiction. Uh -huh. So I think that the better way to get out of the, the iPad from my daughter is just giving some, something, the more, the mm -hmm. funny things. So going to hiking with me or they're giving some food or something, some, some toys. So I think the parents should know that if the, your, your children has got some addictions on the YouTube or the videos or the gaming, that you are the toxic parents. You are not giving them a better place, better their experience mm -hmm. than the internet. So you are the worst than the internet. So, yeah. I so think you, are, you yeah. are very much professional. You are aware of, from, you can draw the line. This could be addiction. So, so that's the key. Yeah. So the, the, how much time is there, how we can define the addiction? Mm -hmm. So they just turned to the seeing the YouTube, the one hour is addiction or 10 hours addiction. Mm -hmm. So there, as a researchers, like the, the Mrs. Ogan can define that, the guidelines, or there's something like that. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's, it, it's maybe the AI can learn about their, the child's behaviors mm -hmm. and then tell their, the guidelines to the, their parents. Hey, I think that your, your babies is now Having, seem to be, yeah, yeah to, 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 to be hardcore. Mm -hmm. So then the parents can do that. So the, we can build some, 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 some inventions right. to, to solve this problem. Right. So that's what I think. Okay, so what, what do you think of this inclusion? I think it's, either, either one of you. Oh, do you, would you like to present? I just give one, 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 one com comment on that. You know, I, I asked my daughter to, to, to play the iPad since one year old. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. One so, year? Yeah, one year old. And even at two years old and three years old, he can, can see so many videos in YouTube. It's not YouTube, it's Yoku. Yeah, they don't know YouTube. <laughs> yeah. so, so, so I think so the key point is not stop the, the, the kids to use that. It cannot be isolated. Mm -hmm. You just to tell him and tell her what kind of things you can use and when you can use that. Mm -hmm. to, to, to make sure that our, our kids, I have two daughters, uh, ask, ask my do two daughters know how to do the self-control since right. they are kids. Yeah. That's important. Yes. Um, I think, um, Amy, um, you've, you've actually learned over the time that when to see those children growing up, and more they're into games, they grow up in a certain way. And how did you define that? Oh, yes, so um, we were talking earlier about actually some of what are the actual virtues of uh, being engaged in gaming in the mm -hmm. digital world. And some of the things that we were talking about from the research are um, uh, the ability of games to close gender gaps, mm -hmm. for instance. So um, research in the United States shows that 
Um, girls have, on average, lower spatial reasoning skills than boys. Mm -hmm. um, fortunately, with further research, we were able to show that these are not genetic differences, but that instead, um, a short period of time in playing games, and particularly uh, games with a first-person perspective where you're you know, running around and navigating maps, are able to eradicate the differences in spatial reasoning entirely between mm -hmm. uh, adult uh, women and men. Mm -hmm. um, we are, we're also talking about some of the research showing that um, surgeons who played a lot of video games as children <laughs> actually yeah. have improved hand-eye coordination and are better able wow. to engage yeah. in uh, delicate, um, difficult motions in surgery than those who did not play games as children. And so we're wow. actually seeing many of these positive effects as uh, we age um, in how they affect our, the, our brains and our actions uh, as adults. Um, based on the right. activities that we played as children. How can online gaming affect the brain, uh, like becoming a good surgeon? What do you think? <laughs> Actually, uh, you see that uh, there are lots of prejudices against gaming in this world. Uh, you call it a devil, it's a addiction, uh, you would dep deprivation of people's sleep, uh, deprivation of people's uh, learning opportunities, or you call it uh, uh, you call it uh, something very positive. Uh, you can train a surgeon to become a better uh, surgeon in operations. Uh, Actually, in the real digital digital world, uh, from uh, entrepreneur, active entrepreneurs' uh, perspective, uh, we have uh, our mission. Uh, we have a sense of responsibility. Uh, currently, the education is uh, lagging behind the development of IT uh, in different Chinese schools, uh, including uh, in some American schools. Uh, in communicating with the students, I realized that uh, uh, about sixty to 70% of the knowledge they are learning, they are gaining, they are obtaining, uh, has got no value, no significance uh, in future world. Uh, after their graduation, there's a possibility, there's a likelihood. Anyway, I admit uh, fundamental elementary education is a pushing force for society. Uh, physics, chemistry, uh, and they are very important. Uh, they are cornerstones of uh, science. However, the internet uh, has uh, uh, has uh, uh, resolved uh, issues once uh, you need to learn. Uh, but uh, the internet has offered the solutions already. For example, you have to memorize lots of things once. But now uh, we realize that. Uh, the outstanding technologies uh, can uh, make up for our memories already. And uh, now we need to emphasize more uh, your thinking capabilities. And uh, however, our educational system is still emphasizing memorization. Uh, actually, our education should uh, emphasize uh, uh, learning of the fundamentals, but this is something still missing in our educational system. Uh, we emphasize uh, learning in silos uh, and in the growth uh, process of many kids. Uh, they do not know the principle uh, suggested by Newton, by Einstein, but uh, with the development of the IT, in making judgment at the fundamental level, we need to base our judgments uh, on the uh, fundamental principles. But we are learning so many things uh, at the top level. But this top level knowledge is being replaced by the internet. Therefore, from our perspective, uh, regarding the internet, you may feel it is a devil. Sometimes, you think you may, it, it may, may be turned into an angel, but it's not a devil, it's not an angel. It uh, is, in the process of, process of human development, it's a new communication means and a platform. It is enhancing our efficiency. Let me give you a very simple uh, example. 
in reading news, once our habit was to、uh, to turn to newspapers, magazines, or journals. But、uh, in the past five years,、uh, the, we saw a very interesting transition already. Uh, once uh, we were reading, we were readers of books. We read, we read words. We read words once,、uh, but now the common means of reading is a short video clips or s- short video streams.、Uh, so in a, the same unit of a time, your accept your uh, uh, your uh, contact with knowledge, information, you got a better intensity actually. And uh, and uh, so the conventional way of learning and today's way of learning, we see major transformation or changes already. Into startups,、mm-hmm. do you have that kind of philosophy in you? Sure, sure.、Yeah. I, I'm one hundred percent, ten hundred percent agree with you because it's we are now in the changing situation. So as he told that the literacy. Change it to the video.、Mm-hmm. So now YouTube became the number one search engine. So the the young generations, millennials, they they do not search on the Google.、Mm-hmm. They are searching on the YouTube. So so I met the guy, the high school guy. He wrote some AI code, so AI programmer. So I just said that how you can learn about AI. <coughs> he just answered me, YouTube. It's much easier to get some information. So rather than、YouTube、the words, more of a printing words, rather、right. you go onto the streaming. So I think that the human brain is now evolving together with the internet.、Mm-hmm. So、I'd like to call that the co-evolution. Co-evolution. So, yeah. So the, we evolved the internet, and internet also evolved our brain. So we are now co-evolved together. So, for example, so it's even me. It's really hard to read their textbook, but it's much easier to just see the video clips.、Mm-hmm. The how to do that.、Mm-hmm. But I think that in the near future, the video. Should be the evolve to the other form. For example, the augmented reality can overlay some videos, overlay some informations on the real, real world, the、mm-hmm. real thing. Then, then we, at that time, we do not need to just type in the correct text even. So, if you find there's some way to how to use this bottle, then you should type in the how to use this bottle.、Mm-hmm. But the, the using the augmented reality, you just seeing this bottle, then you can see the how to use this bottle. Well, so it, it's kind of the co-evolution.、Mm-hmm. It's the, the final form of the merging the human brain to the, the internet、right. or something like that. That's my belief. Yeah, you're you're very、uh, updated with the AR, augmented reality.、Um, have you are you have you invented anything else further? So my former company was the AR company.、Uh-huh. So. As you know, they just for example the Facebook, the face tagging. Right. So the once we should type in the names, everybody's names, but now their AI of、mm-hmm. their their Facebook can recognize your face at once. So it's kind of the AR. So we did that that things. Right. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I I just like to differ from my colleagues a little bit、um, in thinking that. Creating videos are now transforming the way we interact and and learn.、Mm-hmm. Um, the research shows that this is really no different from print and <laughs> reading on、uh, in books. If you are a highly motivated, self-sufficient learner who has the、uh, prior knowledge and the capability to go watch a video and gain something out of it, that works for you. But it doesn't lead to an equitable future where all children have the ability to gain from、mm-hmm. these experiences. And so, what really supports children? This is not saying that this is a vice, but it's amplifying what's currently happening in traditional education. And so, the way that we can use technology to transform the future to a more positive one. Is to create experiences that are social and connected,、mm. interactive,、mm. and constructive, where children are actually engaging in activities, in、um, using what they know, in trying exercises, and trying them with their peers, with adults, and and those are the experiences online that actually lead to the virtues of a digitally connected society. Yes. yes. Do, do, yeah, you were agreeing. Do you think that's possible, though? I mean, 
digital world is only by its in, within that world. And by you know, connecting with the society, uh, maybe using AR, mm -hmm. that might become possible. But ha do, would you like to talk about this? <laughs> <laughs> I would think it be in, possible? in this land, there's industry. Industry, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> More of a regulated, yeah. regulation people, yeah. So, uh, Professor, I think it's a, it's a different kind of views. So, you know, you know I want, the first point I want to say that we, we, we don't need to, to be scared for the digital world and don't need to make the digital world to be a different world. It's no difference. You know, theoretically, our brain needs you know, we didn't get data from eye, nose, uh, skin, get different kind of data. Mm -hmm. And the data will be used to merge into uh, the information. And information will be used for computing from a brain to be the knowledge. The knowledge will impro improve our smart and the intelligence. Mm -hmm. so, so I think it's a, for the procedure, there's no difference. Uh, if you, what kind of inf data and information you get? Mm -hmm. You may get information from the book, from the video, from TV, or from internet, or future AR, VR. So that maybe that should be very fantastic ways to, for you to get more data and more information. Mm -hmm. But for your brain, we are human being. We are not a computer. So if there's so many data, so many inf information for you, you cannot justify what kind of data is useful. Mm -hmm. That's why there's so many people get get involved in the game to be to be a addiction on that. So because it cannot justify what kind of data should be used for, mm -hmm. for himself. So I agree with, I mean, that we need to, to know how to learn. Even give a video, give you a, a, a interactive video, so you don't know how to learn, it's not enough. Right. So showing, how did you learn? Because First I learned from a game. This game is okay. Game yeah. is, is very good for education. Yeah, I think it's very, very good too. Because now, he's, as a CEO, he's socializing uh, with out there, whatever, um, but then started off as a gamer, which will be totally a digital world. Now, I know there's a huge contrast between those two, and how did you balance those? How, is there... A, any way that you can advise, give an advice to children out there that, uh, that might be addicted to it uh, now, but eventually uh, they would have to grow up. I think if a kid is addicted to a game, we will first uh, look at the percentage of this kid. This is very important. So in a country, if there is a high percentage of kids playing games, there might be two factors that will be important. The first, family education, and the second is social education. If the younger generation in a country is higher than the other country, I think we don't need to look at the individual cases. We need to look at the general situation. People might do many extreme things because of his hobby, but this is only individual cases. But we need to look at the overall percentage. And just now, everyone is saying that we have both pros and cons. So I think this percentage is very important. If there is a very high percentage, this means that there is a problem with the family education. A kid who loves KFC and McDonald's, <laughs> and also lower than the, the, the kid, young kids love cigarettes. Mm. <laughs> I think I think uh, we still need to look at how they control themselves and how much time they spend on this matter. I emphasize that whether it's a Madonna, a KFC, a family education and social education are the most important factor for the influence of uh, online games to the kids. 
So if I have a very fulfilling life in real world, then I don't think there will be a big impact of online games on me. 那您觉得？我觉得就。First of all, I love playing games. I admit, I spend a lot of times playing games. However, I also spend equal time to get education. So I'm very happy that I, my school gave me proper education, and my teachers also offered a great deal of help, so I can get interested in what I learn. When I was younger,、uh, I thought education was not boring. I'm willing. I was willing to learn, despite a lot of time spent on playing games. I know this would be a problem if I get addicted. But I, this kind of、uh, playing games didn't affect my ability to get knowledge. Okay, so I would like to、uh, come back to you,、uh, Shodan.、Um, regulations, is it necessary,、yes. and what sort of regulation are needed? You mean especially for game? <laughs> for addiction. Yeah. I, I think it's a, it's a. I don't want to speak how to make policy directly. So I I I think it's I think in the future digital world, there is.、Uh, A very、uh, important three、uh, players here. One is the, the industry by the entrepreneurs. One is government, and one is the, the academia professors. Yeah. So, so I don't want the entrepreneurs、uh, take more social responsibilities. Your main responsibility is, is to earn money, to push the world, the world, the economy increasing.、Mm -hmm. And for the government, you know, the government need to take the more responsibilities and to give more policy, policy, make more policy to support industry, but also、mm. support the public interest. And for academia、uh, professors, you know, we need to give more suggestions to analyze the the problem. And give give more policy recommendations to government, and also work together with the the in, industry to find the problem and give them suggestion.、Mm -hmm. I, I I don't mean every、uh, every stakeholders need to hundred percent do their role. Yeah, I don't want、uh, shooting. Don't don't take the responsibility for social <laughs> social good. So, but we need to know the main responsibility. And then my suggestion is, the different stakeholders need to work together. To do that,、mm. and we we need to educate the kids.、Mm -hmm. We need to to push the the new technologies.、Mm -hmm. It will benefit for 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 human being, and also we also ed need to educate the government officials. Know that is the future. Right. So I think it's then the key point is the model is make sure the multi stakeholders can really work together to make the policy,、mm. and then make sure that is you. Necessary technology、mm -hmm. can support the policy deployment. Right. I think it's、uh, that'd be better for us to face the new digital world. Okay. Um, Junhee, I would like to. We don't have much time, but、uh, we would like to go to the future、mm -hmm. of this digitally connected society.、Mm -hmm. And、uh, I'm sure you're optimistic. Ah,、uh, yeah. Yes. <laughs> and <laughs> and how do you see? How do you see, how how do you visualize that something that we can't see yet? I think that the the ways to evolve to the the future technologies like on the let me think about the the PC. So we cannot see our emails when you are in the the meeting room.、Mm -hmm. so、we should go back to the PC room and check my emails. Now we can do that everywhere because of the smartphone. So that's why because. Because of it, it is not because of the technology. It's because of our desire. We wanna be connected to the others every time, there, everywhere. So that's why their smartphones is so popular among us. So I believe that the sooner or later, the technology will provide the much more, much better、uh, the the.
tools for us to connect it to each other. Mm -hmm. So maybe that occurs some situation that is very hard to differentiate the, the real world to the virtual world, mm -hmm. just on the giving some information overweight on the real information that that virtual information is belong to the real world. Mm -hmm. So I think there is time to think about the how to manage this situation. Now we think that uh, we can install some, some filter on the internet servers mm. or the, your smartphones that we can prevent their, their addictions. That's our belief. But when we face the future, the near future, I, I think within 10 years, we are facing some, some mixture of the virtual and the real world. Mm. So how can we help handle this? So someone think that I want to use some virtual world, some, some ingredients, the features to enhancing my real world experience. So who, who, who decided that this kind of addiction? So I think that there, we should talk about the, with the academia guys or the government <laughs> guys, the, the dealing about this situation. For example, the IoT. So we have some NFC tag on their, their existing real, real physical the things to connecting them to the internet. Already it just started. So, so it will be great. Now, now that we are just thinking about their internet or mobile or gaming that as under the ingredient, as a part of the real world. Mm -hmm. But I think that it's very equivalent to world. We have a two worlds. We belong to the both of the world. Right. So we should uh, make, some, make some, some common sense, common sense. On, on, on this situation. Yeah. Oh. It's hard to imagine yet. Yeah. Yeah, because we are now but sort of in coming. the real world and trying to control to access to the digital world. And, and probably it depends on the pip, you know, each human beings that maybe some might be committing 80% mm -hmm. of their lives to digital world, maybe 20. So by you telling us that there's a combination of both and we don't know which one is which. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah, so that would be very... Difficult to imagine, but I guess that's the that's the future. For if example, I'm the, always seeing my email client, to oh. checking my email yeah. so, for my work. Mm -hmm. So I'm I'm the sharing my times 100 points in the real world, and also right. spending my times times 100 points on the internet world too. Right. Yeah. But I think that it's very hard to differentiate. Okay. How, how do you see the future? Yeah. Well, um, I think some of the topics that been, have been discussed here are where we need to head. So the idea that um, many stakeholders are involved in this issue and, and we need to come together. Yes. Um, Junkie mentioned the issue of guidelines. And actually, uh, there have been guidelines put mm -hmm. out for this by the American um, Pediatrics mm -hmm. Association. However, they're not necessarily reaching the majority of parents who are intended to implement them. Yeah. So one other way that we might um, address this is to give better toolkits right. to yeah. understand not just how much time should be spent online, mm -hmm. but what types of activities should mm -hmm. be done and, and are beneficial and what they lead to. So the types of things I was talking about earlier, whether an experience is social, is connected, mm -hmm. is active or constructive, all of these things could actually be put out. Uh, it, should we come <coughs> up with the set that we would like to see that we know lead to beneficial outcomes? Mm -hmm we could then ask industry to rate themselves on these issues and provide mm -hmm. that information to parents so they can uh -huh. help make decisions for their children about what exactly what types of activities online they would like them to engage in. So instead of parental control, not that, right. having industry actually rate Yes, for rate, example, rate like their movie. own experiences. Maybe like, I, right, AI maybe. can do that. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or we could ask the, the algorithms yeah. to do it. But but this is one thing that mm. we need to understand is, is whether we're all working together right. towards a future mm -hmm. in which um, online experiences yes. that children have are positive ones that lead to, to societal Sounds benefits good. and good. Yeah. And in that way, we can work together to make sure that the algorithms we build, the underlying technologies mm -hmm. are actually helping us right. head in that direction. Just, uh, just like rated R, rated PG. <laughs> like movies, right? So that's what you, you know, flow from the supply yeah. side. I okay. hate that, but... <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, could you uh, present, address your future? What, what, you, what, what, what do you see the future of uh, digital society? 
Yeah. Maybe I, I, I'd be much more optimized than others. So, I, you, know, you know, the God gave, gave us a lot of present, the food, mm-hmm. water, uh, yes. the environment. And the, the, I think the biggest present is the, the internet. So internet brings us so many information. It will uh, enhance our uh, capability for the human beings. Yes. So, but the unlucky for us is, uh, is give this present uh, too late. So we need to spend a lot of time to learn how to use that. Mm-hmm. So, but the human being is very strong, I think. Yeah. Uh, so we can work together to learn how to deal with so many uh, bad things mm-hmm. and to get the better things. Right. So, so I do believe that the digital world will improve our life and also will increase the intelligence for the whole human being. Mm-hmm. So just to believe that and rely on that and trust on that. Uh, I think your perspective is very pretty much like Junhi that uh, it's it's an ecosystem that you call, or it, it comes in nature that uh, the problems Look, will be solved difference. in the uh, yeah. digital From this world. land, they never used the book. <laughs> they just used their brain. Yeah. <laughs> 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 their brain. Yeah. There's a new generation. Uh-huh. And, and, you know, there's a young, young entrepreneur is the burn after the mm. 1980s, right? So, mm. so it's mm. different mm. generation. Millennial, are you? No, no, no. Oh, okay. 1980s. 1980s. Okay, yeah. so on to you. It's a new generation, and yes. maybe the people, uh, just my, my daughters, I mean, they, when they grow up, oh, they yeah. have a totally different world. Yes. Yeah, they have a different knowledge. Yeah. So, well, yeah, Junhi was uh, mentioning about that, uh, about your father and yourself and your daughter. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. What, uh, what We are living it? in the same, the, the physical world, and then living in the different virtual world. <laughs> so their experience is totally different. And their brain is maybe totally different to reacting to the situation. So, so your fa- father had to think on his own, right? And That's you right. had <laughs> you had support of yeah, there between about two two generations. We're, yeah. we're the kind of uh, well, I'm in TV, uh-huh. and I'm sure you've been watching TV. Sure, a lot. <laughs> I love TV, a lot. <laughs> Netflix. We were the generation that were addicted to it one time. That's right. Yes. That's right. So uh, maybe your daughter uh-huh. uh, generation will be. Totally, uh, internet people. When somebody yeah. more chips was embedded in the body, you will connect the physical world with yeah. the f- what it works. <laughs> yes, uh, glasses. Kind of. Yeah. Yes, maybe. And uh, yes. So, <laughs> lastly, but uh, last but not least, um, um, at the very end, uh, so, so. how do you see the future? Uh, Hero Entertainment is actually in three segments. You're actually uh, producing. Uh, games and you are doing the tournaments everywhere and what was the third, third one? Anyway, it's divided into three segments. I've downloaded the records of Three Kingdom. I've downloaded <laughs> the Warrior Saga. <laughs> it's not for me. <laughs> it was so complicated but it, and everything just moves so fast. And so I, I could see that it's for teenagers and you know, millennial uh, people. Now, now, how do you see the future of your industry? We were talking about uh, the sense of responsibility for entrepreneurs, uh, especially for IT entrepreneurs uh, or startup uh, entrepreneurs. Uh, uh, in the beginning, uh, before our discussion, you mentioned that uh, by 2024, the uh, gaming would become, uh, esports could become a part of Olympic Games. Uh, how it will take place, uh, it depend on our in, uh, depending on our industry's uh, promotion. Uh, we are promoting a professionalism uh, of this uh, uh, of gaming IT. We are making a lot of money, but we are not creating many job opportunities. Uh, that's the biggest uh, issue for the internet. So people are uh, wary about the internet, and they do not want to have uh, too much uh, contacts with the internet because if you contact too much, uh, you cannot uh, resolve your job uh, problem. Uh, you could not uh, make more money, and that's why people are scared. People are wary about gaming. If a kid loves uh, football, soccer, uh, maybe he could become a soccer in the uh, soccer player in the future. If he enjoys uh, gaming, you worry. 
uh, he would what kind of a job he will engage in? If he loves of uh, watching movie, maybe he could be a playwright and uh, actor. Uh, maybe, but uh, as an entrepreneur, our biggest responsibility is to promote the professionalization of this industry, so that we can offer more job opportunities、uh, to give the younger generation, so that they won't be wary about this、uh, sector. It's possible.、Uh, in the past five years, have been de developing very quickly. In my perspective.、Uh, It's not because 200 million、uh, viewers are watching the game.、Uh, so the biggest value is for many people to see the hope. Last month, I was in Indonesia in Jakarta. I was in part. Of, I was、uh, watching the Asian games,、uh, and uh, and Chinese ki、uh, kids were、uh, were participating in esports esports、uh, game, and they got the golden gold award. And the parents were their parents were very excited、uh, because、uh, 10 years ago. And、uh, these kids were were being given up by the kids, but these、uh, kids are doing something wonderful beyond their imagination. So when we are promoting the professionalism, a、uh, professionalization of the industry,、uh, we will see better acceptance by the whole society. Maybe in the future. Every entrepreneur on the internet uh, re, uh, involved in IT has to think about the social responsibility. How they can create more jobs for more people, so that people won't be pressured to think. My kids are watching YouTube all the time. That makes me nervous. No parents would think so in the future, because when I was reading, my parents are not nervous. Were not nervous in the past. <laughs> yeah.、Um, But、uh, we're running out of time. I'm sorry, and I can see the bright side now. And I, I would just like to、uh, share with you. According to survey, esports observers were overall 320 million people in 2016, and potentially increase、uh, up to 590 million people in 2020. Yeah. Yeah. So thank you very much, and thank you all, audience, for joining us. Uh, please give them a big hand. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.